Good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees on this uh, June 13th, uh, 2023 at 6.05 p.m. Uh, as we uh, call to order, let the attendance show. At this time, we are missing Trustee Cervantes and Trustee Kerfon. And do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee Solis. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 5-0. We will now go ahead and uh, move to closed session. We will be back at, oh, sorry. We open it up for public comment on any closed session items. Setting 30 seconds on the clock. Thank you. Thirty seconds have passed, and we have no comments by phone at this time. Thank you. Then we'll go ahead and now move on to closed session. We will back. We will report out and be back and open at seven p.m. Thank you.
Good evening, Central Unified Community. Uh, welcome to our regular meeting of the Board of Trustees as we reconvene in open session. Uh, we have two items to uh, report um, from closed session. First, we want to make note that Trustee Kerfan joined us at 6.08 p.m. on item E1. Uh, we had a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee Kerfan, motion passed 6 0. On item E2, we had a motion by Trustee Solis, a second by Trustee Kerfan, motion passed 6 0. And with that, we um, turn to our Vice President as we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To share about our community engagement information, can I ask uh, Senior Lazo to come join us in the front? Good evening. If you wish to address the board, please call 559-276-3150 or fill out a request form provided on the table near the entrance and submit it to the clerk of the board prior to the meeting. If you wish to speak to an, on an item on the agenda, please do so when the item is called. If you wish to speak on an item not on the agenda, you may speak during the public comment sections of the agenda. Si desea dirigirse a la mesa directiva, llame al número 559-276-3150 o complete un formulario de solicitud provisto en la mesa cerca de la entrada y preséntelo al secretario de la mesa directiva antes de la reunión. Se permitirán comentarios públicos relacionados con los temas de la agenda cuando se llame el tema. Los comentarios públicos sobre un tema que no está en la agenda se permitirán durante la sección de comentarios públicos de la agenda. The district welcomes other language speakers to the board meetings. Anyone planning to attend and needing an interpreter for a language other than Spanish should call 559-274-4700, extension 10150, by noon on the Friday preceding the board meeting or at least 48 hours in advance of the meeting, so arrangements can be made for an interpreter. El distrito da la bienvenida a las personas que hablan otros idiomas a las reuniones de la mesa directiva. Cualquier persona que planifique asistir y necesite un intérprete para un idioma que no sea español, Llame al 559-274-4700, extensión 10150, el viernes antes de la reunión y antes del mediodía, o por lo menos 48 horas antes de la reunión, para poder hacer los arreglos para la interpretación. Thank you. Gracias. Next, we move on to a number of our presentations, uh, beginning with our student recognition. Mr. Collegian. Thank you, President Singh. It's my uh, distinct honor to... Uh, uh, recognize an outstanding group of individuals. Uh, this year, uh, as you may have heard on the news or, or on, on many of our social media cycles, uh, our uh, volleyball team at Central East High School were once again the CIF Central Section Division I Valley Champion. So can we please give them a round of applause? Uh, so, some of them and, and the coaching staff is here tonight. Uh, I want to welcome to the stage, uh, to the microphone here, our District Athletic Director, Mr. Rayshon Hightower, to share some highlights about this unbelievable season that they provided for our school and community, and to give them a formal opportunity to uh, be recognized at the Board of Trustees meeting tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, as the softball program comes, go ahead and turn around. Uh, we are here today to recognize the accomplishments of our softball program led by our head coach, Scott Gordon. Uh, the Grizzlies competed on Saturday, May 27th and defeated the Buller Knights 4-2 to two, uh, to win the CIF Central Section Division I Championship. Uh, this is the program's third championship in program history. Uh, congratulations to our coaches, our student athletes, our staff, and our parents. Um, and you guys did an amazing job, and you made uh, not only this district proud, but your, your families and our community proud. Congratulations.
Can we just get another round of applause for our fantastic student athletes? We turn it back to you, uh, Assistant Superintendent. Thank Collegia. you, thank you. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep the good times going. Please allow me to take a few moments to formally recognize uh, this year's honorees. As you know, every year near the end of the school year, uh, we get to uh, uh, take time to honor and recognize some uh, valued employees here in Central Unified. Uh, this year, we have four categories again to be recognized. Rookie of the Year for Classified, Rookie of the Year for Certificated, Certificated Substitute of the Year and Mentor Teacher of the Year. I'd like to start with our uh, classified uh, Rookie of the Year. Uh, unfortunately, she can't be here today, but uh, she is uh, uh, unavailable, but I understand is watching uh, dur d wow. during our Zoom. It's not, is she it's here? here. <laughs> she, made, she made it. She made it. She made it, okay. Well, let, let's begin with uh, the, the Rookie of the Year for uh, the certific certificated side, Ms. Sophie Karras, she's a social science teacher at Central East High School. Uh, exemplary, she is a PLC leader, an active member of the department, and a great teacher. She ran a successful history day department, she loves her students, and is evident that by how many hours and time she puts in, and how much love she has for the classroom. Thank you so much, congratulations, and uh, well done. Our next award recipient is a Certificated Substitute of the Year, Mr. Kyle Pittman, nominated by Andrea Chase, Nicole Madrigal, Shailene Myers, Sarah Houlihan, Sierra Fiore, and Belinda Halsey. Mr. Pittman displays all the district's core values. He is reliable. He's a reliable employee and never misses work and approaches each situation with a positive attitude. Congratulations and thank you so much for your service. Gotta get your perfect attendance pit. Mentor Teacher of the Year, Social Science Teacher at Central High School, Ms. Tricia Ashi, nominated by Lauren Howerton, Mark Beyer, and Evan Mosier. Ms. Ashi is a teacher who meets the needs of each student who walks into her classroom. Within the very first days of the school year, Ms. Ashi finds out things about her students that makes their lives difficult and works and begins to figure out how to address their needs. She strives to make her students feel valued through uh, the giving of praise, creating a tight-knit classroom community, and encouraging them with laughter within the walls of her classroom. Congratulations, Ms. Hashi. <laughs> and I believe the last one uh, is, is not present with us tonight, but I understand she might be watching through, through our live feed. Congratulations to the Classified Rookie of the Year, Ms. Jacqueline Manessis, Justin Garza High School Special Education 3 aid. Jackie is extremely positive, friendly, organized, and professional at all times. She is easy to approach and is always going above and beyond to do her job. Jackie is also highly engaged with students and their, and their learning support. Congratulations, Jackie. Uh, have a one, thank you for providing us a wonderful year of service and uh, looking forward to more great things from you. Thank you again to all of our honorees and all of our Central Unified uh, School District staff, team, faculty to, that made this year such an amazing year. Uh, we don't have any employee association highlights this evening, so we move on to superintendent board communications. Start with Superintendent Davis. All right, thank you. Just a few of them. Uh, as you are aware, school ended with some fantastic graduation ceremonies. Thank you all 
for being able to participate in uh, as many of them as you can. We want to congratulate our class of 2023. This year we had a total of 983 seniors graduate last week and a handful more. Yes. A handful more that are working hard this summer for our summer graduation. So thank you to all the staff that are rallying around those seniors so they can finish during our summer program. Let's talk a little bit about summer program. It started yesterday. Um, it is off to a great start. Thank you, Area Administrator Jeff Garrett, who's been keeping all of the uh, details working and, and in place and doing a lot of phone calls for folks that have not uh, remembered that they're signed up for summer school, which started on Monday. We've got about 2,000 students uh, that began their summer experience yesterday, and it is hosted at Central East, Harvest, Glacier, and McKinley. And throughout this week, staff will continue to reach out to any student that we had planned to have uh, to make sure that we get everything arranged and, and we get them in place as they are enrolled in any spaces we have. Uh, they're busy with the wait list, so if a family changed their mind, they're quick to to try to get other students who expressed interest in it. Another celebration I'd like to add along with our graduates for this year, um, Dr. Boatwright shared with me that we have some really exciting news regarding our college courses our students are taking. This school year, our district had a 94% pass rate of college courses taken while in high school. And Central High School, which offers the early college dual enrollment program, had a 97.6 college course pass rate. And I'm understanding that's the highest anywhere in our valley. So wow. round of applause for that. And just, I also want to remind uh, you all that next week on Monday, June 19th, the district facilities will be closed in honor of Juneteenth. And that's all for me. Thank you. Any other um, comments or, or announcements from any board members? Trustee Kerfan. Happy Pride Month and uh, happy Juneteenth uh, next week. Thank you. Trustee Creo. I just want to thank all of our administrators and staff who put together the graduations. Those that I was able to attend were wonderful, and I heard great things about the others that I unfortunately had to miss. Um, but it's always a pleasure to be in attendance and to see the culmination of all the hard work that the board and everyone at the district has done to be able to get those students there. So thank you very much for all your hard work, and congratulations to our class of 2023. And though they may not be listening or watching, definitely thank you to even our uh, our graduation speakers, especially for those that uh, that came to our um, Persian graduation and our, even our Central Online graduation. Uh, next, we move on to comments from the public. If we have anybody in the public that would like to uh, uh, share any comments or um, anything not on the agenda with the um, board, you may do so at this time. And Gilbert, can I ask you to put 30 seconds for those that may be uh, attend uh, viewing us? Absolutely. At this time, I also want to let the board know that we had a comment from the public submitted in advance via email that was printed out. It's uh, in front of you. Give it a read when you get a moment. And, uh, and Clerk Kervon, do we have any uh, submissions? Um, yes, we do for uh, specific agenda items. Okay. Right. Would you like them to come up now or later? We'll, we'll call them up when, when they come up. Are there any on the consent agenda, or are they all on other items? Not that I have. Thank you. 30 uh, seconds have passed, and we have no comments by phone at this time. Thank you. Then we move on to our consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Trustee Carrillo and a second by Trustee Kerfon. Oh, no, Trustee, Trustee Sellers. Sellers. Sorry about that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Any abstain? Consent agenda motion passes 6 0. Thank you. We move on now to our action items. Our first uh, action item is approved Narcan at school sites. Mr. Collegian. Thank you, President Singh. This item returns to the board from our previous meeting. Uh, both, uh, uh, again, both CUTA and CSCA are supportive of the expansion of Narcan in classrooms, including uh, adding them to our, our bus fleets as well. Um, we do have uh, training in place as well, in-person training as discussed in our previous board meeting. 
which will be provided by our health staff. Uh, administration is recommending approval of this item uh, to move forward for this expansion. Uh, there was also uh, information uh, whether or not we needed to update our administrative regulations based on uh, Narcan availability. And I think Dr. Boatwright has uh, put some work behind that and is in the middle of uh, uh, making some, uh, some updates. Yes, so we did review. Um, RAR doesn't require updates at this time. There is information that we do need to put into our, uh, our parent and our student handbook, um, but that the AR is ready to go if you decide for us to move forward with this action. Trustee Griffin. Thank you, President Singh. I would just like to get some clarification. Uh, is the goal to have Narcan available at all school sites or in every classroom? Uh, after approval of this item, the, uh, our work would be to have them in all of the classrooms, in person, in, uh, on the persons of all of our school uh, liaison officers, and our buses as well. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and that would be secondary classrooms. Trustee Malin. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just have a quick comment. I wanted to thank the Care Club for help bringing this forward. Um, I think it's great. I've got mine, and I think everybody should have one. Uh, sooner or later, this is going to save somebody's life. So thank you, guys. Trustee Carrillo and then Trustee Sars. Dr. Boatwright, you, you just mentioned this is going to be at our secondary um, school sites. Are we considering having them available at our elementary schools just in case of an emergency? You know, I do believe they are in the nurse's office. Okay. They are in the health offices at the elementary school site, but there's been no discussion about moving them into the classrooms. And then, of course, we don't have liaisons at the elementary, whereas we do at the secondary level. Okay, thank you. Trustee Sellers. I just like to echo Trustee Mailing's comment. Thank you to the, the public for uh, supporting this. Uh, as someone who has personally used this and administered, this medication is a life-saving medication. Um, I strongly support it. With that, I motion to approve. Second. Motion by Trustee Sellers, second by Trustee Carrillo. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 6-0. Big thank you to the CAG Club, especially our seniors that graduated last week. Thank you for joining us. Can I, I know we've um, approved the item. Can we send them um, a notice and just let them know uh, that we've taken action and it's been approved? Thanks. Next, we move on to motion um, M2, accept gifts to district. Yes, thank you again, uh, Trustee Singh. The following gifts to the district are attached for your review. Administration is recommending uh, acceptance of the gifts. Uh, happy to answer any questions the board may have. Uh, President Singh, we do have a comment from the public on this item. Um, sure, then we can uh, go, if you can go ahead and call them up. Uh, that would be uh, Ruben Coronado for M2. He wrote M2 on his I, I just, or M2. That's what he wrote. My, my, well, yeah, he, he can tell us if it's actually for M3, yeah. I can't hear you, what you said. Uh, you didn't mean to write a comment for M2 on accepting gifts for the district? No. Do you know which item number you uh, asked for? He has no question at this time. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion on this item? So moved. Motion. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Kerfan, a second by Trustee Carrillo. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, item passes 6-0, thank you. Now we move on to action item M3, hold public hearing of the 2023-2024 local control and accountability plan. Uh, Dr. Boatwright. 
Yes, thank you. So as you may recall, I shared the LCAP draft with you at the May 23rd board meeting. This draft has been available for public inspection since May 11th at the district office and also on the district website. We are required to hold a public hearing to solicit recommendations and comments from the public regarding actions and expenditures proposed in the LCAP. Administration is recommending that after the board holds the public hearing that this item is placed on the June 27th board agenda for action. Thank you. So at this time, we'll have a public hearing and um, invite those to come share. Uh, Clerk Kerfan. Uh, thank you. I have a comment from Ruben Coronado. Uh, good evening, President Singh, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Davis. Uh, my name is Ruben Coronado. I'm a CPA and a member of the community. The uh, third page of the LCAP reads, the LCFF gives school districts more flexibility in deciding on how to use their state funds. In exchange, school districts must work with parents, educators, students, and community to develop the local control and community plan. On March 7th, 2023, at the last LCAP input meeting, Hispanic parents and community asked for the list of the input and that had been gathered throughout the hearings, and the request was denied by the Director of Federal and State Grants and the Assistant Superintendent for Educational Services. If we have, I just, if we have uh, tutorial services, why are teachers sending students to detention because students got an F on an exam? If we have tutorial services, why are school administration sending students to detention because the student has been tardy? If we have tutorial service, why are there no tutors, tutors at Saturday school? When students attend Saturday schools, they return home frustrated because there were no tutors. The administration is not working with the Hispanic parents or the community. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other uh, participants in the hearing? Uh, I have no other comments for this item at this time. Then we will close the public uh, or give uh, 30 seconds for anyone uh, calling in. Setting 30 seconds now. Thirty seconds have passed, and we have no comments by phone at this time. Thank you. Uh, then we will uh, close the public session uh, of uh, of this uh, public hearing for the LCAP. Are there any comments from uh, Board or Superintendent Superintendent Davis? Dr. Boatwright, can you share uh, where the input, the raw information, is posted of all of the input? Uh, that parents or community members did submit so that everyone knows where they can locate it? Yes, absolutely. It's on the LCAP website um, on the district webpage. It is posted there along with the draft. Trustee Korea. And so what is customarily our practice, um, assuming it's not being requested as part of a Public Records Act request, if Members of the community request this information. Are we directing them to that website? Are we providing them copies? What do we, how do we typically respond to those inquiries? So it is on the website. We also have a copy of all of the feedback um, at the district office, along with the copy of the LCAP draft. Okay. So they can come and they can view it there, or they can go to the website. OK. And so the, the comments with respect to tutoring, can you share how we're currently using tutoring and what tutoring is available for students? 
So we have a number of tutoring opportunities. We have tutoring available in our after school program. Um, we also have many teachers at school sites that offer um, tutoring for students as well. In some cases that occurs after school, in other cases it, it occurs during the lunch hour. And then also we have tutoring services within the school day as well. I'm just giving you the ones that are outside of the actual school hours. We also um, have a contract with like 24 hour tutoring services, don't we? Don't we have, I believe? So we did not renew paper okay. um, for all school sites this year. We have some sites where um, students were actually using that service, and so we did renew it for those sites, but currently we don't have an online 24-hour tutor tutoring system that's available at all school sites. When we had it, it wasn't being used. It, it, they just weren't utilizing it. Okay. And so if there are parents, guardians, that have students who are struggling, who are receiving Fs, Ds, or Cs, mm -hmm. and uh, are in need of assistance, who should they be contacting on site or at the district levels if they're not reaching out to us directly? Yes, so I would say the classroom teacher first, um, and then also school site administration would be able to um, offer opportunities for students. We also, again, we have our after school program at every single school site and tutoring is available there as well. And we've done a really good job this year eliminating wait list. So m almost all of our students have had a spot that have requested it in the after school program. Okay. During um, your presentation last board meeting, we talked about, or you talked about increasing the number of um, bilingual liaisons, and I know that there, there were some questions that were submitted. Can you just remind us as to what the board would be approving as part of the LCAP tonight um, as far as the, the bilingual liaisons, what that looks like, and how many we'll have, and if we currently have the numbers as to um, the specific language languages we're recruiting for? Yes, so we currently, we have 12 um, bilingual positions, bilingual uh, liaison positions that are posted. Um, we have 12 posted for Spanish, three for Punjabi, and one for Hmong. Um, this will provide a full-time liaison to be at every school site, so they're not being shared. Um, the Hmong liaison, because we don't have a large Hmong population at a specific school site, will actually be available to serve all of our, all of our Hmong population. Uh, we'll monitor that, and if there's a need for additional, then, then we'll come to you and ask for an additional liaison as well. And this is in addition to the current liaisons that we have? Mm -hmm. I believe we have, and I'm going to get this number wrong, three or four? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. But that also includes our interpreters, translators. No? Six exclusively? Okay. And so of the six, we have, can you, do you have the breakdown of what languages? I do not. With me? I'm sorry? Uh, one is Hmong, I believe. I believe two is Punjabi and four we have Spanish. We currently have 16 positions posted on EdJoin, 12 of which are for Spanish, three are for Punjabi and one for Hmong, just for clarification. Okay. 16 total, okay. And what numbers were used to determine the number of um, the specific languages? We looked at the information um, that we have as far as uh, the languages that are spoken at the home, so the okay. corresponding languages, so those are the percentages that we looked at to determine if Punjabi or uh, Spanish was needed at a school site. Okay, thank you, I really appreciate that. I'm really excited about um, those liaisons and um, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna make a difference for our families. They've been asking for this for some time now, so I'm glad that, that we have the funds to be able to support those positions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there are no other um, comments then for about um, uh, f the, uh, with regards to the public hearing, then we will go on to, uh, do we have to take a vote? No, oh, we do, okay. No, so, so we, we will move the item to uh, action for the next board meeting. Next, then we move on to hold a public hearing for the 2023-2024 proposed budget. Superintendent Davis. Thank you. This one um, has a PowerPoint attached to it, so Dr. Boatwright's going to pull that information up, and I'm going to be right in the way of it because I've got my screen here. Um, 
the brief presentation for the proposed budget for 23-24. Um, following this brief uh, presentation, we do request a public hearing to be held. Uh, you have been provided um, a printed copy in the public one online of the booklet. That, please, I want to remind you, is a draft, uh, and it will be finalized prior to you taking action on the item at the end of this month. Um, comments and questions that we collect certainly will research and address those in advance of requesting a vote on it at the end of this year. Uh, this, as I mentioned, we are looking at the proposed budget for uh, this coming school year. So if we want to take a look at uh, the first set of data, Dr. Boatwright, if you want to slide over to slide, thank you very much. Um, and this is what we anticipate in terms of revenues. Um, as, as follows, you can see it both listed and then also in uh, graphic form. You'll see that 70% of our budget is generated from the LCFF formula. Um, which is our state's funding formula, and it's calculated based on grade span data, supplemental funds that we receive for unduplicated count students. Those are English learners, free and reduced lunch count, as well as foster, and then concentration funds as well if the percentage of poverty is over a level, which it is, so we receive both supplemental and concentration. And then there's also add-on funding in that LCFF for transportation and TK. Um, so that is the bulk of the revenue that we bring in, and then you'll also see federal, state, and local revenues uh, that make up our total anticipated proposed budget that we begin with at $308 million. Um, if I can also note, as, as you'll see throughout this, uh, in our federal money we are including COVID dollars. Uh, you may have had questions. I think we've talked in brief about uh, remaining COVID funds that we have. We have about $30 million left of COVID funds to be spent over the next couple of years. So certainly that will generate more conversation and, and is included in, in this in information tonight. Can you go to the next slide, Dr. Boatwright? Uh, from this vantage point, you can take a look at what our proposed or expected expenditures are going into this next year. And you see this based just in generality of salaries, books, services, capital outlay, uh, and then also a picture that associates with it. Uh, we Our salaries and, and benefits certainly on this uh, format look a little bit lower than we typically see. And, and you'll see it on the next slide. We typically have around 80% of our budget is associated with staffing. However, as a reminder, in books and supplies right now, the majority of the COVID funding sits first in that budget until it gets sign assigned out into projects. So that's why you see on the, the overall change a little bit lower than you, than you typically would. When we break down the expenditures, as you can see on the next slide, between restricted and unrestricted budgets, you can uh, see in restricted funds that um, some of it is used for subs, part-time help, summer, intercession, those types of activities that are appropriate for restricted funds. Uh, and then much of it is, as mentioned, not yet assigned, and that is uh, applied into the books and supplies budget for right now until that is assigned to projects, uh, some of which may be books and supplies. And then we have contracted services and some building, which would be capital outlay. Unrestricted, as you can see, that matches the trend that we're uh, used to seeing in terms of salaries and benefits taking up around 80% of the budget, and then smaller slices of that $187 million um, uh, rounded up uh, to books, supplies, services, and capital outlay. As has been mentioned in the LCAP presentation of last meeting and was just briefly discussed, some of the things that are making up our expenditures within this budget that we're talking about numbers-wise includes classroom sport, safety measures, uh, areas to focus on student wellness, facility, and family support. And so we want to remind you of what the components within those dollar amounts you're looking at uh, represent. And we're excited about the support you've provided um, for services around all of those that, that are mentioned. So thank you for that. When establishing this budget, if we can go to the next slide, there's certainly assumptions that are important probably to you in terms of how this budget is established that, that you're taking a look at. Uh, and so what you see across um, this document are all of the assumptions that the uh, fiscal team is making when preparing uh, the budget, and then it is trued up in the fall when you receive the first interim report, um, and then again adjusted when you see the second interim report. Uh, I should have told you at the beginning, for those of you new in the cycle or, or as a reminder in the process, the last time we talked about budget was second interim. 
uh, it won't match this. We're starting a new budget, budget cycle uh, to begin the new year. It will be in September uh, that we bring back kind of how we ended this current year. So right now we're running two, uh, two budgets for you to take a look at. The CBEDS enrollment um, is certainly um, higher than our current enrollment and makes an assumption demographically that all of the students in transitional kindergarten, all of the students are going to show up and, and we don't tend to see all of them come, but we know that the dates are increasing and allowing more transitional kindergarten students uh, to, to enter the district. Our unduplicated count um, due to the work of all of our school sites and, and the collection of the appropriate documents um, is up at 12,000 uh, and, or almost 13,000, excuse me. You see COLA is in there. The, the state does put out with the governor's budget specific details uh, referred to as a dartboard that help to apply what these assumptions are around the COLA, um, the CPI, and then of course the increase in CalPERS right down there at the bottom. Uh, these are the assumptions that are making up the numbers that I'm, I'm speaking to you about at this time. What's important also to note is on the next slide when we look at the multi-year projection, uh, we have a beginning balance anticipated, not including carryover or um, items that don't finish by June 30th, but uh, 78 million is sit sitting there added to the revenues. If you go down the line of it, take away the expenditures, we have about an increase of 11 million um, and an ending balance expected if we do every single task and spend every COVID dollar in advance of its due date or end date. Um, we would have a total ending balance without our commitments and our assignments um, of 30%, as you can see projected across the three years. Uh, what we know, though, is that this, the requirement of the state is 3%, but our board policy is 5%. So you'll see both commit and a committed amount, uh, which is actually what we're talking about on the next item in terms of committed funds for specific projects, as well as the 5% reserve, which is a part of our uh, board policy. And when you drop down to the bottom line, we are within what the expectation of the state is, which is um, we need to, by board policy, be above 5%, and the states uh, would expect that we be below 10%. And so we're right there um, in the three years, um, three out years. So uh, I, I would like on the next slide to share everything I've been talking about is general fund. Uh, but as we present the budget and you look at, at all of the tabs or sections associated with our budget, there are other funds that are not uh, considered a general fund. And these are the different funds listed eight through fund 67 that uh, cover different areas, and so I want to make sure you also have the beginning balance, expected revenue on those, and ending balance. And so no concerns in those areas, uh, but they are certainly um, areas of our budget that we, uh, we need to track and monitor, and, and we audit each year. So that's a quick overview of it. Tonight's purpose is to allow for a public hearing, uh, collect or solicit any questions you have so that we can prepare the final document uh, for your action at the end of this month. Thank you, Superintendent uh, Davis. Can we um, open uh, for public comments? Do we have anyone in the audience? And, if, and can we also uh, put 30 seconds uh, for those that wishing to uh, address us from home? I don't have any at this time, President Singh. Thank you. We do have a request from the public. Um, yeah. Mr. Coronado, you, you can come over. Sorry. Good evening, President Singh, Board Trustee, Superintendent Davis. Uh, my name is Ron Coronado. I reside at 5256 West Locust. I'm a certified public accountant and I'm a community member. The reason I'm here tonight is that I have several questions. One is, are this, are this board and administration required to work with parents and community in how the budget is spent? By giving parents and community 90 seconds to speak is not what I call working with parents and community. When the administration fails to provide services to students and Hispanic parents, to me that is harassment, bullying, and discrimination. On the 2022-23 budget, the current budget, 
The state gave Central Unified School District $39 million and federal government gave $14 million because there are 13,129 socioeconomically disadvantaged students at Central. This is a total of about $54 million. This year, the administration spent only $33,842,476 of this money. It's a $21 million and $157,524 million uh, in the beginning balance of the 2023 budget. On page six, D1 of 23-24 budget, the beginning balance is $78 million of, of $42,248.39. The $54 million for low income, EL and foster students. This money is for extra services for the students. This money is in addition to the AD money from the state that gives to the school district. Thank you, Mr. Coronado. My Please question tonight sentence. is how much of this $54 million is in the $78 million beginning balance? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coronado. 30 seconds have passed and we have no comments by phone. Do you have any comments um, from the board members during this hearing? Trustee Korea? Do we, can we respond to the question as to the 54 million? How much of the 54 million is being carried over? I will look it up and make sure that we respond publicly at our next meeting. Yes, I made a note of that. And then, I mean, with respect to the community involvement, our parents and families, the LCAP requires their input. I mean, we talked about that in their provisions in, in the plan. Um, we hold sessions uh, to provide them that opportunity. We also provide an online survey or access for them to provide comments online, correct? And so can we talk a little bit about what other avenues are available for our community to be able to provide input um, to our budget? other than also having elected all of us seven sitting here? Yes, so there are a number of meetings that are held. We've got our um, district level meetings where parents are invited. We have our PAC. Um, we also have our DLAC. We have our, our Migrant Parent Advisory Committee as well. Um, and so those are opportunities for uh, parents to provide input on the LCAP goals um, and also those expenditures. That's in addition to um, the online survey that's available, the meetings that are happening at the school sites um, as far as budgets are concerned. So there's a number of opportunities for parents to become involved and to, and to provide input. What steps do we take to ensure that we have interpreters in the various language? I mean, I think based on the numbers that you can look up, um, both on the, what is the online website? The dashboard? The dashboard. The uh -huh. dashboard, mm -hmm. and I know information that we've been mm -hmm. provided. The second largest um, language spoken is Spanish. So, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. other than Spanish, we have a high population of Punjabi, Hmong, mm -hmm. and Arabic. So yes. if, we can, if we can just talk about what steps We've, we take, um, I know I've asked this before, to ensure that we are communicating with our interpreters, translators, community mm -hmm. liaisons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with our student involvement, uh, engagement mm -hmm. coordinator to ensure that we have staff available that can communicate. And maybe perhaps if there's anything that we're doing differently to ensure that we're creating an environment where our families of all languages feel welcome to provide that feedback and, and express their concerns. So I do know that our, our interpreters and our liaisons, our liaisons especially, do reach out directly to families um, to invite them to attend these meetings and to provide their input. Um, we always have all of those languages represented um, at those meetings so that those services are available as well um, and so that they do feel, feel welcome and are able to openly communicate um, and pr provide their feedback and their concerns and, and also their recommendations for expenditures and, and the actions that we take in the district. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Superintendent Davis. 
I'd like to also add, while it wasn't identified as an LCAP stakeholder or a community engagement event, the coffee chats that I had opportunity to hold in each of the different languages and also out in our Biola community provided another spot where we gathered all that information and also included that in the process. So uh, it, when it comes to the feedback, you'll see it in, in a variety of ways. If somebody's emailed something in, if something's been on the survey, as Dr. Boatwright mentioned, it did give us an opportunity to see groups that may not be a part of DAC or DLAC or a, a formal group at a campus, but were choosing to come to, to a different meeting and, and allowed us the same conversation. So that was a pretty exciting add-on this year that was different, and, and I look forward to continuing it. I, I got a lot of great information, and it was different information from each community uh, the, of things that were important. Thank you. And I would just remind our community, those that are present here and those that may be watching remotely or maybe may hear this recording, we're also available. I mean, I know I am. You can find all of our contact information as your elected officials uh, on our website. You can email us, you can text us, you can call us, we'll call you back. So if there are concerns that you feel are not being uh, considered or you're not comfortable participating in any of the meetings and avenues that we're already providing you, um, I think I can speak for all of us when I say you can reach out to us directly. We're here to advocate on behalf of the students to ensure that we're providing the services and the needs that our district has. And I think that this board has been very critical of our budget to ensure that we are providing the staffing and the resources to our students so that we can ensure that they're succeeding both now in their educational um, programs and environments, but also as they move um, past our school district. So please call us, text us, email us, find us at a grocery store wherever <laughs> you, you come across us. Thank you. Trustee Solis. Um, I guess my question will be the superintendent and our, our financial person out there. Uh, on your uh, budget handout, page four, uh, under other funds, line item 21, building fund, Draw your attention to the ending balance 2003-2004. Is that balance including the, the sale of the uh, school bond? Yes. So what it assumes here is that everything, as you know, on second interim was to be spent this year that has been committed. Certainly projects won't be done by June 30, so some will carry over, and what you're seeing now is the sale of that last series. That's correct. Okay, uh, draw my concern to for administration, my concern of we still have some outstanding uh, projects in line, so I got a feeling our financial officer is gonna have his hands full when he gets here. Um, also like to draw your attention to on the same handout, page six, line items 14 through 17. Can you give an explanation of what those items are and how fluid they are with the understanding when we're adding on uh, new employees, that is a factor of a benefit package that we have to be responsible for. Can you give me an explanation of how fluid the numbers are? So I'll, I'll start the explanation on CalSTRS, CalPERS, and then I'm, I'm kind of pointing my way at, at uh, Mr. Collegian. So you'll see uh, the state uh, releases, as they re refer to it, a dartboard to show us all of the different fees, and, and uh, there is no anticipated increase in CalSTRS at this time, but there is in CalPERS. And uh, those are very sensitive and have played a part in, in any, any employee that's full-time with us. Classified CalPERS is the, the area that is applied to um, their contracts and CalSTRS for certificated staff. Do you want to talk a little bit about the ebb and flow of, of how CalPERS and CalSTRS has affected us, Mr. Collegian? Well, I mean, essentially, it's, it's the retirement systems for both classified and certificated employees uh, above and beyond, you know, compensation for salary, then you know, district has to budget for the increases for retirement systems. Um, I think setting aside uh, funds to do so and making sure uh, we stay ahead of that is 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 critical. Thank you. Uh, 
there are no other comments at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing, and this item will return at our next board meeting for action. We move on to uh, action item um, sorry, M5, adopt, uh, uh, approve and adopt resolution number 2223, committed fund balance, Superintendent Davis. Thank you. This item returns to you with revisions based on the proposed budget that I just mentioned. Last meeting, the first draft of this item when it came for information um, identified 18 million of committed funds. Uh, committed funds, as, as was noted just previously, are required to keep us at a 10% reserve and are now calculated in the proposed budget at 16 0.57 million, and so suggestions have been made uh, based on where to commit these funds. They are a suggestion, so following your discussion, I'd like to take your direction and make adjustments that are necessary. It is appropriate that you approve or adopt, excuse me, this resolution with where you want those funds committed so that when you are approving the budget, it is already locked in in those space. Thank you. Trustee Korea. Thank you. I have an idea and I know what I want, but I'm not sure I have a recommendation as to where to pull it from. Um, one of the next items under our action items today is the approval of a new dis job description for a director of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Where, what is our plan with respect to providing a funding source and allocating allocating specific funds so that this individual within our ed department, they have the ability to actually make change, whether it's programs, training, whatever that looks like. Um, but in addition to paying their salary, I would like for us to allocate some amount of money so that they have a starting point. Um, and it's not a matter of, well, they're limited to what they can actually do because they don't know where the, comings, the money's coming from or they're competing to use the school budget or whatever the case may be. Um, so any ideas or thoughts, or maybe you guys disagree with me, but that's kind of what I'm thinking and I'd like to allocate some funds um, under this section. So you absolutely can. We could add a purpose here and take some of the budget from another line and move it to this line to be specific. I would note and I'll start and then Dr. Boatwright add in what I might forget, please. Uh, there is already money for professional development. We have grants. We also have one later on this agenda that allows for additional funding. So it is expected that there will be a budget set up for both training as well as resources that does not affect the school site allocations uh, to offer the support needed to do the work as as you mentioned is not to take away from the school sites but to use some of those general categorical dollars grant funds and things uh, we believe that would be appropriate for uh, for our work as we begin and if you would rather move money from another spot to here this is the place we do it our, our goal would be to use our most restrictive funds first, I will make note, and so those that I just mentioned to you, we even if you add in or allocate some to this area, we would first use all those restricted funds before going to this. These committed funds are general fund dollars, and upon a change in resolution, you can use in different ways you need to should an emergency come up or an issue come up that, that's needed, so. Okay, because I'm looking at this list, um, the Carryover, uh, let's see, the carryover and unspent supplemental and concentration grants. How do we use that? In the LCAP, the goals of the LCAP identify the different areas that we work on to support the students who are, are the generators of these funds. And so our unduplicated count students are the beneficiaries of that. Okay. And then the student learning support Actually, no, before I get there. During our last meeting, we had a conversation about the a million dollars that has been allocated to purchase of additional school buses. I have a recollection, and maybe I may be wrong, that this money, that we've already spent the money for the school buses? We did have more in the committed funds before, and we have spent, but we also have an additional bus as we expand to our final year at Justin Garza. I believe uh, Mr. Bath had spoken of that before. 
uh, there is one additional bus, I think it is, that is, is required. And that's what these, what these funds would be essentially earmarked for. And Unless then we have another source first. Right. We're going to use more restricted first and try to leave these available committed should you need them. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's hard to hear back there. I just want to make sure I heard uh, how many buses. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear back there. We have one more bus this year uh, that is needed for Justin Garza. Am I correct with that? Or, yes, or please? That's correct. Okay. And what does a bus cost us? Uh, that bus, 200 and I don't have the number right in front of me. Um, I want to say about 250. 40,000 now. Okay. And then the, the larger buses are right around 250, 255,000. Okay. Do we keep funds in any other account in the event that a bus breaks down and we need to replace it immediately? I know that this, we, we replace buses with grants, but that's, we smash, we get a new bus, we smash a, an existing bus kind of thing. So we're not really adding to our fleet except for the fleet, except for the bus for Garza. Yeah, we added the 13 buses uh, two years ago when we started getting those, um, and then we have added in the in the previous in the in the past um, as if we have a bus that's no longer repairable or f if something comes up to that. Right. So we've replaced buses, but we haven't added. Right. We don't yeah. intend to add more to our fleet because if I remember correctly, transportation has reached a point where where you're at capacity. Yeah. And I remember this specifically because I do not like our current class schedule um, and the early start, or not our class schedule, our bus, well, both actually. Um, but part of the problem with that is that we don't have enough buses. Right. And there are more issues that can be repaired with simply purchasing more buses. Right. Okay. So there's a potential that we can allocate funds from this line item elsewhere or earmark student learning support to support the DEI position? Yes. Okay. I, I want to clarify what Mr. Bath just said. We have one bus at about 300000 and he has two buses that are in need of repair. And to answer your question, there isn't uh, a, an ongoing budget for engine replacement which is pretty expensive and so oh, we don't I I would uh, small pieces we are funding as we go but I think this was originally established as the last step to try to fix those yeah two buses and then the new bus mm -hmm. so I just want to be careful and, and full disclosure on that uh, before before we move it from that spot okay yeah that's why I'm asking I want to yeah. make sure I understand to piggyback on your your subject matter there. We will be having a separate line item proposal coming forward on our new fueling station, which I'm assuming we're going to bite the bullet and buy a whole new pumping station, correct? Um, the proposals are in. We're still at the conversation, but leaning that way. Yes. Okay. I don't want to speak out of turn. but And give me a guesstimate, ballpark figure. What are we talking about for a whole new fueling station? So the the part we need to replace roughly about one hundred and eighty thousand. Once, I don't want the uh, uh, piecemeal price. The total price of a new pumping station, the approximate amount. Yeah, so with the system and the condition it's in, the there's only about three portions of it. So once we get the compressor replaced, we just need to double check our fast fill line and our slow fill line. So if there are repairs needed there, um, I, I don't see them being too much more than the $180,000, $190,000 for the compressor. I would say if we need to do any additional repairs other than the one hundred and eighty to the compressor, it'd be somewhere around the two hundred, two hundred twenty-five thousand. I mean, do we need fuel? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a joke. Got it. I May I suggest uh, that million is spent pretty fast on those big things. We have six million in student learning. We have an educator effectiveness grant. We have the uh, additional music and arts grant. Uh, there was a grant that just came across my desk. So we have some other sources as well. I, I would like to make sure, reassure you, that we plan to make sure they have a, a substantial budget to do the work that we need to do. Training-wise, that's what our categorical dollars are there for. Uh, I don't know that necessarily 
Right now we need more there because I can see seven million right now sitting here that would be available should we need it for some of that work. But I love your support for it. Okay, so I would just like to request then that if there is a request for funds and someone somewhere says we don't have money and then we hear about that, that we please bring an item for discussion so that this board can reconsider because um, I just I don't want to hear that we don't have money when we have dedicated funds to support certain programs and services that we want to make sure we're funding. I'm glad you said that because one important part of this is should we be in a position this resolution can come back to you and you right. can move budget at any time. We just have to set it to start at the dollar value so that when the budget is adopted it's set. I just don't want you all to be afraid to do that because I know that Collectively, we're a pretty fiscally uh, conservative board. I mean, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but I, I do want us to be considered and be aware of, of what those financial needs are. Thank you. Do I have a motion on this item? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo. We have a second by Trustee Solis. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Motion passes 5-0. As uh, Trustee Crafond is not with us right now. We move on to item number six, adopt publicly available pay schedules. Uh, Mr. Collegian. Thank you again, President Singh and Board of Trustees. Uh, this uh, item actually relates to uh, STIRS and PERS uh, as, a publicly, uh, as a public agency who participates in the retirement systems such as STIRS and PERS. Uh, state law requires that our available, publicly available pay schedules are approved by the Board of Trustees uh, before July 1st of each year. Uh, this, essentially, this is essentially an annual item uh, and it's governed by Subdivision A of CCR Section 570.5 that defines the requirements for publicly available pay schedules to be used. Uh, uh, itemized on the agenda uh, item itself are the t uh, eight different requirements. Uh, attached uh, to this item are the salary schedules that have previously been adopted by the school board uh, to represent the pay rates for the 2023 and 2024 uh, fiscal year school year uh, for the purposes of determining the amount of compensationable earnable pursuant to government code sections 2630 and uh, 20636 and lastly 206361. Uh, administration is recommending approval of this item and move forward with uh, the posting of the uh, pay schedules uh, with the updated dates come July 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Solis. Second. We have a second by Trustee Carrillo. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. We move on to item number seven, approved declaration of need for fully qualified teachers for the 2023-2024 school year. Mr. Collegian. Thank you again. Uh, this item two is an annual item uh, regarding the uh, declaration of need for fully qualified teachers in accordance with the California Education Code Section 44300 and the CTC, the California Commission on Teacher Credentialing, that the districts provide an annual declaration of need for fully qualified teachers prior to placing them on internships or limited assignment permits. Central Unified does limit its use of interns and limited assignments in specialized fields like special education, physics, mathematics, and the sciences. Administration is recommending approval of this item. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Move to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Korea. Second. We have a second by Trustee Malin. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. We move on to item number eight, approve new job descriptions. Assistant Superintendent Collegian. Uh, yes, the job descriptions are brought to the School Board of Trustees for review and or revision and or adoption. Uh, attached for your consideration is a job, descri job description titled Director of Diversity, uh, Equity and Inclusion. However, the attachment has recently been updated 
hard copies have been provided for you at, uh, at, at your um, sitting stations there, and also hard copies for uh, the community. Uh, the back table over there for the updated job description. Uh, the uh, position itself would fall on the certificated management salary schedule listed as director for 225 days. Uh, the salary schedule two is attached to this item. Uh, administration is recommending approval of this new job description. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Carrillo. First, thank you for bringing this item and thank you for incorporating most of my changes. You're welcome. Um, I still have one significant concern. So uh, the education and experience requirement. I know we're saying site principal experience preferred. Is there any other way to articulate the experiences that we're looking for without requiring site principal experience. My concern is that we are, and I know it's as preferred, but with everything and even when I am pushing to include bilingual preferred, I get pushed back that we're gonna exclude applicants. So my concern with this language is that we're still gonna exclude potentially qualified applicants that, have, that are members of historically marginalized communities. And so, I want to ensure that when we're developing, and especially with this position, mm -hmm. if we can better articulate what experience we want them to have than, than just say principal. Because I am I wrong to believe that there are potential candidates who would have the experience to, to serve in this position who have never been a principal? Uh, that could, yeah, you're not wrong. That, so, that there's, there's a likelihood that if they don't have principal experience, that they would have administrative experience uh, in other um, job classifications in which they've supported marginalized communities to be qualified candidates. I think the looser way to say it, uh, uh, Vice President Creo, is to uh, uh, really typically when we look at job descriptions, you see two terms that pop out, either preferred or required. Uh, the looser example to I'd keep like to think the more inclusive. Right, right. But the looser uh, example of the term would be preferred here to keep that candidate pool more open than, than, uh, uh, than using the word required. Uh, the other option is to remove it altogether and, and just run with, uh, and use the terminology listed in the top bullet, just three years of successful administrative experience supporting marginalized communities and just leave it there. That's really the, the more inclusive option of the three, if that makes sense. Thank you. So. so I like that, but I also see things from a legal, more inclusive, how do sure. we change certain policies. So from your experience as our assistant superintendent of human resources, yes. what concerns do you have, or uh, would you be amenable, uh, and is that acceptable? Well, and then of course, my fellow colleagues, right. what your thoughts are, because uh, I may I, be alone in this. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think in my experience, uh, the term preferred uh, wouldn't exclude uh, th um, those candidates who may not have that experience. Uh, if we kept preferred, it certainly will when we have the word required. It does keep for more openness there for candidates who don't have principal experience to be able to apply for it. Um, I, I don't think there's issues either way if we removed it altogether. Um, I think ultimately looking for, you know, what their experience and background is as they're applying for this position, and then of course going through the vetting process and the interview process will show whether or not, you know, the candidate is is has the background and the ability to do the work. Thank you. I hope that makes sense. It does. I appreciate it. Superintendent Davis. If I can add, I think the uh, wanting to also consider candidates that were a site leader, so that we recognize this work is going to require some significant systems uh, view of how our schools are operating. And that could be helpful when this position and our other directors are, are giving feedback and helping to improve systems at a school site. That That has been our I think our other director positions it was required uh, that they have been a, an administrator. And in terms of the work, it's been very helpful 
when somebody has had the experience at a school to know some of the things around master scheduling and some of those components uh, that led us to this being a preference for us. It, it's a skill set that can be helpful in terms of where this work needs to begin is support for our school principals and our teachers. So that was the intention behind it, kind of the why behind it. Can someone who's never been a principal have master scheduling experience? And I ask just for my understanding, because again, I can see big picture policy legal issues, but you guys are the ones that are working day to day in our system. I'm curious if any of my fellow colleagues have any comments or thoughts. I, I, I would, uh, I think, my preference would definitely be um, for as uh, Assistant Superintendent Collegian was kind of saying the most expansive, which in some ways is to strike out the second line. And just keep, keep the, 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 first, the first line in the, in the version, that, the most up-to-date version that we have. I mean, I like that. Anyone else? Well, I was hoping to get your opinions before I, <laughs> okay. So I move to approve the Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion position with a revision of striking under education and experience, site to principal experience preferred. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo. We have a second by Trustee Solis. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those in opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion passes 6-0, and Trustee Kerfan is back with us. Thank you. We move on to item number nine, um, approve MOU with Highway City Community Development Incorporated. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Boatwright. Thank you. This item is returning for action from the May 23rd board meeting. If there are no questions, then I recommend this item for approval. Trustee Sellers. Motion to approve. Second. We have a uh, motion by Trustee Sellers. We have a second by Trustee Kerfan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining? Aye. Motion carries five, zero, one. We move on to item number 10, approve annual submission of the Carl D. Perkins Career and Vocational Grants, Dr. Boatwright. Thank you. So we are requesting approval to receive the Carl D. Perkins Career and Vocational Grant funds from the California Department of Education. This grant provides supplemental funding for equipment and services to enhance our CTE pathways at Central High School, Central East High School, and Justin Garza High School. Administration is recommending the board approve submission of the Carl D. Perkins Career and Vocational Grant and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Trustee uh, Carrillo. We have a second by Trustee Solis, beating out Trustee Malink. All, all, all approved, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 6-0, thank you. Item number 11, approve annual authorization to purchase via piggybackable, I like that adjective, uh, sorry, cooperative purchasing grants, Superintendent Davis. I did check to make sure it's a word. So uh, this item is an annual request to continue authorizing purchases using piggybackable cooperative purchasing agreements, uh, such as supplies and equipment. There's a variety of cooperative purchase um, purchasing contracts that are available and it does allow us to um, uh, move quickly on items that are needed in standard and also at a, at a, a great price. So we do recommend action on this item. Approval for it, please. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Mailing? Yeah, do we have any idea what we're, we're actually saving when we piggyback on, on some of these items that we've been doing? Has it ever been calculated? I would have to go back and ask the groups that use them. I know uh, different departments uh, have used them. I know for supplies and materials like classroom materials, there's definite savings. 
quantifying it. I don't have it with me. Have we ever bidded it out just to ourselves, just to double check that, that we're getting the best deal? On some things, uh, we have in the past, but I can't speak to all of them, and I'd be happy to look into it a little bit more and Thanks. give you some more information. Trustee well, Curry. if I can add, I think one of the other typically an advantage from a, the administrator standpoint is that then they don't have to go through the bidding or the um, request for RFPs and filter through those. So it saves some time. So I think it would be a financial no, component. I get it. That we I just was curious. We've asked before. That's why I remember them mentioning that that was another added benefit. Do we but piggyback on the fuel? Or we do. We did. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Second. We have a motion by Trustee Mayling. We have a second by Trustee Kerfan. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 6 0. We move on to item number 12 approved piggyback contract with Eagle Shield Pest Control Incorporated. Mr. Bott. Good evening, Board. Uh, board President Singh and Board Members and Superintendent Davis. <clears throat> the district requires comprehensive integrated pest management program for its sites. On June 28, 2022, the Board approved the use of public, con uh, public code section 20118, which allows districts to utilize cooperative bids secured by other public agencies for purchases of materials and services. District staff is recommending the use of Fresno Unified School District's uh, contract number 2136 for pest control services. This bid was originally awarded in, on June 2nd, 2021, and is currently on an extension for one year to June 30th, 2024. The cost of this contract is $72,168 for the year. Uh, administration is recommending this board approve the piggyback contract with Eagle Shield Pest Control after I answer any questions. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Carrillo? Just out of curiosity, since Trustee was ma mailing was asking about the previous, do we? Did you happen to look to see what it would cost if we did an RFP? Um, no, not if we did an RFP. We did um, used to go through a different vendor for the services. Um, we weren't getting a value package. Uh, another really big benefit of when we do piggyback or pro uh, uh, cooperative purchases is you get to see the end result before going out to bid. Uh, if we go out to bid, you're, you, know, you, you get your results, low bid wins. Um, if that's a vendor maybe we don't know or we're not having a lot of experience with or we've heard bad things about, it puts us in a bad position. The piggyback way, we're getting to see the end result. We see the, po we see the cost. We see the prices um, up front. So we can actually even shop the um, piggybacks. Thank you. Trustee Mailing? Yeah, at what, at what uh, so we've got our maintenance department. Do they take care of like the vertebrae, vertebrae pre uh, pests like gophers, squirrels, mice? Yeah. Or is this company going to handle that? So this company handles that. Um, we'll do some, we do have a piece of equipment to do some stuff uh, in-house also, but um, the fumigation, the um, baiting, the trapping is done by Eagle Shield Pest Control. Okay, so that's that, that cost has nothing to do with, with this, right? It's going to be an additional expense? For it's included. So at what point do we say we need them out there? Because we have a lot of sites where... I mean, gophers are, are pretty bad. Yeah, so we have, we're have we trying to revamp our, our processes where we're pretty much putting in work. So it's a work order with the vendor constantly having to come out, check them, bait them. Um, it, they come out as much as we need, which is the benefit of this. Uh, we're not charged a, um, you know, they come out to our sites monthly to service. But with the gophers and squirrels, as many times as we call them back, they will come back out and service our fields. And, and we've used this company before, or is this a new company? We've used this company before. Uh, we've used this company for the past about four years. Okay, thanks. Motion to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Solis. We have a second by Trustee Malin. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Item number 13, approved use of Collegiate Stadium by the Blue Devils Drum Chorus, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, Board President Singh, uh, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Davis. 
tonight, uh, you are receiving this item uh, regarding uh, a facilities usage usage request that we received for the use of Darren Collegian Stadium by the Blue Devils Drum Corps. Uh, board, <coughs> pursuant to board policy 1330 and exhibit 1330, uh, the Darren Collegian Stadium facility use requests for outside entities are required to go to board for approval. Uh, the Blue Devils Drum Corps from Concord, California is the most decorated world-class competitive uh, junior uh, drum and bugle corps. Uh, this year, the Blue Devils Drum Corps will be competing at the 2023 Mid-Cal Championship Showcase at Bulldog Stadium and is requesting uh, to use uh, Darren Collegian Stadium for rehearsals. Administration is recommending the approval of this item. Thank you. Trustee Solis. Does this interfere or are we going to have to move around of any of our, our t school team sports activities for that field? No, you won't. And where does this fit in with the item that was brought to us, I don't know, about three meetings back pertaining to giving our fields a rest? It is not affected. It is the stadium. The stadium is what they're requesting to use. So they're not going to use the field? No. Okay. Trustee Korea? Trustee Solis took my question, so that's fine. I think, if I remember correctly, the, though, um, I don't think that the Collegian Stadium gets as misused as some of our other fields, which is why there's a need to put a hold and restrict the use, but they're gonna be using the field at our stadium. Correct. Okay. We're just not restricting or placing any holds currently on the stadium to allow any of those, I guess the grass to rest or whatever. Are, do we have artificial? Okay, I was like, wait, I, I know I'm, I'm saying this, but this doesn't, okay, thank you. That's, yeah. I'll move to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo. Second. We have a second by Trustee Carfon. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries five, one, zero. Thank you. We move on to our information items. Number one, receive information on arts, music, and instructional materials from the discussionary block grant. Dr. Boatwright. So the arts, music, and instructional materials block grant allocates funds for five purposes. In order for the district to expend these funds, a plan must be approved by the board. These funds will be available for encumbrance through the 2025-2026 fiscal year. The attached plan has been developed for the full amount of the grant. However, we anticipate the governor rescinding a portion of the grant. Actions listed in the plan include, but are not limited to, increasing instructional materials and professional development for school climate, social emotional learning, culturally responsive teaching, EL student supports, digital literacy, and expanding diverse book collections. Administration is recommending this item be placed on the June 27th Board Agenda for Action, and I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Sellers. Historically, has the state not funded the grants or only given awarded partial ask for anything back? You know, it's, it's always a possibility. Um, we've received um, the first part of this money at this point, we have 4.7 million that we have actually received. We were supposed to, we were slated to receive the full amount, which is the 9.3, uh, I wanna say 9.3, um, but we are hearing through the, the governor's May revise that we won't receive that second amount. And so we had to write the plan for the full amount, but we fully anticipate only receiving the part that we've, that we've received thus far and nothing else will be coming. Thank you. Okay. 
If there's no other comment, we'll go ahead and um, just just because it's a plan, I want to give uh, others an opportunity to just provide their input. So we'll move it to action for for next meeting. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask the board just because we have members of the audience uh, wishing to comment on the item N5. If we can move that to, uh, to next to our our next item, if we can move N5 to uh, to now. Yeah. Can I? Is there a motion? So moved. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee uh, Sellers. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries uh, six zero. So we move on to then uh, to do uh, item N5, receive information on student wellness and SPED support services contracts for 2023-2024. Uh, Mr. Schaefer. Good evening, President Singh, members of the board and Superintendent Davis. Tonight I am bringing forward information about six student wellness and special education support contracts. They're all renewals. Um, we have ACES, which provides our behavioral support to assist with our tier three behaviors that require intensive intervention. We also have Care Solace, which assists our families in getting them enrolled in outside mental health services. Um, we have Maxim Healthcare. They help provide um, healthcare services, speech, and behavioral support in the event that there's any need for additional coverage that we can't support. Um, we have National Impact, which is formerly SenCal Mentors. They are placed at our middle school, our high school, and our adult ed, and they provide mentorship for students who need connection and re-engagement due to attendance and discipline. We have Paradigm, which prepares and submits all our Medi-Cal reimbursement and also assists with our audit and our claims. And we have the talk team. So um, they provide additional coverage for when our um, speech language pathologists are out or if we have um, heavier caseloads. And so um, this would be for one bilingual SLP for the following school year. Um, the documentation is attached, and we are recommending that the item be placed on the June 27th agenda for action, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Public questions public or comments public. from the board? Public first. Trust, uh, sorry, Clerk Kerfan. Thank you, President Singh. Have we received any comments from community members or parents uh, regarding uh, number three, Maxim Healthcare Staffing Services regarding their uh, ABA Applied Behavior Analysis Therapy. So we haven't used uh, Maxim in the past for ABA. Mm -hmm. They are a service that um, is available to us, mm -hmm. um, but in the past we've used Maxim mainly to cover our nursing shortages, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, when we have uh, behavioral therapists interacting with our students, do they practice ABA? Yes, so we do have ACEs and Maxim that we could draw upon if we are in need of a behavior inter, uh, intervention aid. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Clerk Grafon, do we have any comments from the public on items uh, related to this? Uh, yes, we do, President Singh. We have a comment from Mr. Randall Cooper. Good evening, board. I represent National Impact Mentoring and Training, and we're just so proud to be a part of this district. We've been a part of this district now for six years. And I was a police officer in the past for 30 years, and I was the deputy chief of police, and I was in charge of uh, student services. And what you are doing in this district, no one else in this valley is doing. Uh, you have a program now with a vice principal, the counselors, and the social workers, and our mentors come together to talk about the behaviors of students that are disrupted the campus. I've checked, no other school is doing this. So you are ahead of the game. So what we've done, with impact mentoring, we've been into an agreement with the SROs so we can work closer with them and then they can enjoy our carry and eye process. We uh, talked to Assistant Superintendent Paul Burrell and he's allowing the, the campus security officers to actually direct young people to our program. So when they see a student on campus having an issue, uh, they can direct that student to us and we'll work with them and the officer to make sure that student services are taken care of. They want to do this. The police department now wants to do this in Fresno Unified because nobody else is doing this in the Valley again. And I can probably tell you from being a past police officer, there's probably no one in the state is doing that where they're actually utilizing SROs in the capacity to make sure the students get the services. So we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of you. We want to grow with you. Uh, your school is expanding over at Joseph Garza. 
Uh, right now, you're going to add another 1,000 students, so we're just asking for additional personnel to work there, as well as if a lot of you know David uh, De La Serta in the back. He's been so valuable to your district going all over the place. We want to put someone at ease and allow him to have the freedom to move around and work with your administration to make sure your children are safe. And I would just like to say in the future, I would love if you would let the Valley know and let the parents in your district know because you guys aren't publicizing the fantastic job you're doing. You don't have issues that these other campuses have and, you're not, and the other campuses aren't supplying their students with the services you are. So if you ever get to the point where you need to publicize what you do, there's a lot of people out there that would really love to know what you're doing. And just one last thing, we uh, are, are we're now working with your campuses to give these tablets out to the students. They're 15 gigs, they're internet connect connected. We got clearance from the district. We're supplying our kids with it. But any child in your district, because everyone in your district gets free or reduced lunch, can have access to one of these systems through us. So. If, they, if any parent wants their kid to have a tablet that's internet connected and be able to put your icon on for your website, we'd love to do it. So I just want to thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Any? I think we have a question from Trustee Korea. Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. So you work with the SROs that are on campus. Yes. To have them refer students yes. if they to see you, us, right? They're, yes. Not the other way. We're not referring students to the SROs. <laughs> No. Just want to make sure. No, okay. we're not referring students to them. They're referring students to us. Uh, after we saw what happened in Fresno Unified with the African American parents and others being upset that they felt the SROs were doing more arrest than anything else, we came up with the idea of, hey, let's have the SROs assist the kids. If they see a kid with a problem, before they have to expel them or arrest them, they get to some help. We'll work with them. We, last year we did over 4,000 one on ones with the kids in the district. We're gonna, and we want to work with these kids. Get them into the system, let the vice principals and the counselors and the social workers know they're having issues and see if we can bring all the services available to them. So we, we're, we're enlisting them to help us, not, not harm. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. President Singh, I have Sorry, no other trust, comments. Sorry, Trustee Creel and then Trustee Kerfan. On that same, same point, though, I do want to um, applaud our administration, both at our cabinet level and our school site level, because the change and the process that the gentleman was talking about is something that has been new and has been part of, of this leadership. So I, I'm really grateful for that, and I'm certain that a lot of our parents and students are as well, so that we are creating a positive interaction and, and we're keeping kids in the classroom so that we can educate them. Um, Trustee Kerfan was asking this, but I just have a general question about all of these contracts, and I've asked about this before. Do we collect any information um, from our students, so from our end users, to see what is effective, where we could amend our contracts, how we can have better relationships with these partners to better serve our students? Yes, so we um, we hold IEP meetings for all of our students and we do get feedback a lot from our parents at that time. Um, and the general response has been very positive. Okay, but not all of our students who are receiving services from these contracts have IEPs, correct? Or do no, they? Okay. so like for example, like Care Solis would be for everyone. So right. we do have a user dashboard and so we can see how um, many of our students have been referred, how many have had the handoff to an agency. Um, and so we do have those types of uh, information that we can gather. Okay, thank you. Trustee Kerfan. Uh, I was gonna say, President Singh, I have no other uh, comment cards in the public. If there are no other uh, comments from the board, um, can we move this to, uh, to consent? Then we'll move this to consent, thank you. Next item, we uh, move on to, um, oh, sorry, yes, back to number two, receive information regarding 2022-2023 program self-evaluation for California State Preschool Program. Dr. Boatwright. Thank you. So the preschool program self-evaluation um, provides a tool to monitor the effectiveness of our preschool programs and then to also identify needs for improvement. Information gathered from assessment data, parent surveys, staff feedback, and a review of systems are utilized to, complete, to complete the program self-evaluation. Significant gains have been made in the areas of self-regulation, 
math, and language development. Based on the findings from the preschool self-evaluation, program goals will focus on concepts of print, phonological awareness, number sense for math, and the inquiry process. Another goal will also be to actively recruit parents to be involved in parent meetings. Parent meetings will be expanded to preschool site locations. And this item is just coming to you for information only tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and also our program supervisor, Ying Li, is here as well. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? No, but I wish I did because we have special guests to talk about the program. But thank you for being here. If there are no objections, um, we can bring this back to consent for the next meeting. Oh, sorry, it's only one info. Thank you. Um, then we move on to item number three. Uh, receive information regarding 2023-2024 District Title I Parent Engagement Policy. Dr. Boatwright. Yes, thank you again. So the District Title I Parent Engagement Policy provides guidelines on how the district can support sites to increase parent engagement with a focus on student achievement and school performance. The District Title I Parent Committee the Parent Advisory Committee, or PAC, the District English Learner Advisory Committee, or DLAC, and the Migrant Parent Advisory Committee, MPAC, met in May to participate in the annual review and update of the policy. Revisions made included ways to make the document reader friendly and to add information about the Parent Square communication platform. In addition, each school site has a site-specific parent engagement policy which reflects the needs of their school community. Administration is recommending that this item be placed on the June 27th Board Agenda for Action. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. We also have uh, Annette, uh, Annette uh, Grigsby Chamberlain here for state and federal programs that can speak to that as well. Trustee Carrillo? Do we translate this policy to any other language? Yes, also to Spanish, uh, Hmong, and also Punjabi. Okay, and do we distribute this? Do we have any legal requirement to distribute this to specific families or parents or community as a whole? Do you want to get? And if so, how do we do that? Okay. It goes out annually in the parent uh, handbook. So it goes home with every kid at the beginning of the year, and then as they come in and during registration, they're given a handbook when it comes. It's also posted on the web page. The district web page or each of our school sites? Parent involvement. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. If there are no other question or comment, we can uh, return this also as consent. Thank you. Item number four, receive information on expanded learning opportunities programs. Mr. Garrett. Thank you, President Singh. I'm actually going to start this item and then hand it over. So the expanded learning opportunities program provides funding for before and after school programs. We utilize uh, these funds in conjunction with the After School Education and Safety Funds, or ACES, and also 21st Century Grants to provide after school enrichment opportunities for our students. Since Justin Garza High School and Liddell and River Bluff Elementary did not qualify for ACES and 21st Century Grant funding, ELOP funds will be used to ensure these sites also have after school programs. So contracts are attached to this item for these services. These contracts are for the 2023-2024 school year only. And I would like to invite um, Area Administrator Jeff Garrett um, just to share a little bit about these programs and what was done this year. All right, so good evening, President Singh, members of the board, and Superintendent Davis. Through a successful partnership with the Fresno County Superintendent of Schools over the course of this past school year, we were able to build strong momentum heading into 23-24. This includes filling all of our site lead and assistant site lead positions. We added staff to uh, dramatically decrease our wait lists that we had at the beginning of the year, or in some cases, eliminate the wait list completely at a site. 
Um, we began site lead professional development. Uh, the goal of this uh, learning opportunity um, is to align our extended learning opportunities after school programs with our systems and our regular day programs and systems that are happening within the regular school day. I need my readers. <laughs> um, the also the programs provided many fun and engaging learning opportunities and experiences both on and off campus for their students, some of which included whole family learning opportunities. We are excited for how this work will continue and grow moving forward and administration res recommend that this item be placed on the June 27th agenda for action and we are happy to answer any questions. Trustee Kerfund and Trustee Korea. Thank you, President Singh. So um, should the board approve this item, uh, this um, Garza, Liddell, and Rebluff approving their, these, this will allow all of our school sites to have after school programs, correct? Correct. Okay, this is just the three that wouldn't qualify otherwise? Those are the three that would not qualify for the other grant funding, correct? Okay, thank you. And Trustee Kerfon, that is what we did this year as well, and so we're just continuing that practice to ensure that all of our sites have a program. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I had that uh, confirmed. Thank you. Trustee Korea. Thank you. Um, so I, I want to make sure this is clear. For the three additional sites that we're funding, I'm particularly asking about Liddell. The ELOP funds will ensure that this program is offered for free, right? Or is it still at a reduced cost? There would be no cost to families to participate in this program. Okay. And then do you guys know, is Liddell still providing the additional after-school programs where it is offered for a, for a fee? Yes. So we have our expanded learning opportunities, which is that those are these programs that Great. we're speaking about tonight. And then in addition, we also have a campus connection program that is our fee-based program. Some parents choose that option. Right. Um, you may or may not note this, so you may have to get back to me. Do we know whether Liddell and some of the other campuses that were significantly impacted, whether we've eliminated the wait list or if we're still experiencing impact? I know it has to do with staffing and there were other um, concerns. So if you can kind of just give us an overall like update as to where we see if that's still happening and, and what we anticipate will happen next year? Yeah, so um, we, uh, Liddell did still have a slight wait list at the end of this school year. Mm -hmm. uh, we did add 35 totals, uh, 35 additional staff members to our after school programs between January and uh, the end of the school year to do our absolute best. Uh, met monthly with the uh, team from FCSS to get updates on not only our staffing but also our increased enrollment because we continue to get students added to our list as we were adding staff to decrease the list. Um, we did eliminate wait lists at some sites, Roosevelt, Madison, Houghton Kearney, uh, to be a few of that. Okay. Um, and this year, we, uh, being proactive heading into next year, did send out a, uh, in, um, an interest form, uh, both paper copy in multiple languages as well as multiple times through, so, uh, through Parent Square. Um, and we do have... Um, over 1,900 who have responded already, which allows us and the team to already go into next year planning for those numbers to best be prepared to have no wait list at the beginning. That is our goal. Do you happen to know how many students were ser or we serviced this past year? Uh, on any given day, it could be close to 1,600 across the district. It can vary depending on if students are in attendance or not, sports are going on, things of that nature, um, but anywhere between about 11, 15, 1,600 a day. Wow, that's still a significant increase from yes. the responses we received. Awesome, great. Um, so I understand this is a one-year contract. Correct. Are we exploring other potential opportunities for the following years? The one-year contract with FCSS would give us the opportunity to do that and not be locked in beyond this school year. Great. Thank you so much. Trustee Solis. Um, I've already said this before, but I think I'll echo it again. I'm looking forward for my site administrators, the uh, after school program administrators, and especially my area administrators to facilitate communication. I realize these are an enrichment program, but sometimes I think they use that as a get out of jail card. 
there to help the students with their homework. When you're looking at elementary and you're looking at junior high school, so much of their grade is based on the homework. If they're not, they could be doing well on the test, but if they're not handing in the homework, they're not gonna have a grade that is gonna be what we want. So with that, um, in the past when uh, the enrich well, when the after school programs were approached by parents with it, they fall back and they play the enrichment card, okay? Well, I'm sorry, we had a softball game scheduled, that's why we didn't do your son's homework, math homework. In the meantime, he didn't hand it in. So I'm looking for that communication, as well as I'm hearing rumors back that uh, there is no communication between the ongoing uh, student's teacher and the after school program, that's why they're not doing it, okay? Correct, and one of the reasons for the professional development uh, beginning this year was to, to do some of those things in regards to establishing those expectations for the communication between the program site leads, our uh, school site leads, and making sure that that communication site-wide is happening and that all of those needs are being met. We'll continue to work on that. Thank you. I think I just want to make a comment a little bit uh, building off uh, what Trustee Solis and even Trustee Carrillo sort of either were alluding to or directly shared. I think I, I've definitely heard comments from um, members of our community specifically uh, asking in some ways, is it an enrichment experience um, or in some ways is it a childcare experience in, in, in terms of... Uh, uh, there's clearly a need, there's clearly a desire, hence, hence why we've needed to ex uh, increase services and, and hence why even at certain sites we even have a wait uh, line. But um, while I'm very appreciative of our partnership with uh, uh, the Fresno County for, for the number of years, I do hope maybe in, um, uh, in, in years future we can actually explore uh, different possibilities. I know some of the larger school districts actually run their own programs in some ways to create the integration that uh, Trustee Solis has alluded to. Um, but but I, I, I think there may be an opportunity, not for necessarily this upcoming year, but, but in years future for us to really uh, develop some of our own programs that are more integrated with what we're doing here at Central. Um, although obviously we're definitely appreciative of the partnership we've had with Fresno County over the years. But that's something I would definitely like in years future for us to explore. Sure, and I could, I could just speak to one of the things we, we did focus on. I uh, led one of the first professional development sessions was just that. It was we want our programs at all of our sites to have a consistent level of expectation in what we're providing our students. And so if we're not meeting collectively as a group of site leads, it it's, makes it difficult for those things to be consistent. Also wanting them to make, be, make sure that you know the understanding, the expectation, the conversation around that we're an extension of the school day. We're not separate from the school day. We're part of Central Unified. So we're reviewing our mission our vision, our core values, the things that we stand for during the school day, and making sure that those are things that we embody within our after school programs as well, uh, was a focal point of how we kicked off that professional development that will lead into next year as well. Thank you. I have a request. Sure, Trustee um, Creel. Maybe in like the next six months or at some point convenient to, to you and everyone else, can we just get a presentation on the different after school programs that are being offered at a school site and kind of just talking a little bit about the performance, the professional development that's being provided, kind of the efforts that we're engaging in to ensure that there's more of this collaboration um, between our after school programs and our, and our teachers and our schools. Um, just because I know I heard a lot of complaints when I was last campaigning and I didn't fully understand the different levels that are being offered at Liddell, for instance, the, the Campus Connection versus our expanded learning programs. So I think it would be beneficial for all of us to have a better understanding, but also mm -hmm. to kind of hear that we've acknowledged where, where there are some areas to grow and mm -hmm. that we're actively working on them. Um, and also for our community to understand what our expectations are so they're providing us that direct feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We'll, we'll certainly put that together and bring that information back. Appreciate it, thanks. Thank you. If there are no other uh, comments or questions, and, and knowing these are the options for this year, can we go to move this to the consent agenda for, for next meeting? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, as we already addressed uh, item number five, we move on to number six, receive information on school to home technology purchases. Mr. Horseman. Good evening, President Singh, trustees, Superintendent Davis. Uh, tonight I bring forward the school to home program extension. Um, this, this program enables families in need to apply for 
the students to take home devices for the entire school year and provides connectivity on those devices. Um, the School to Home program aims to provide equal access to online learning opportunities and resources for students, um, especially from low-income families in rural areas. Um, this program actually has been a very careful collaboration with our parent involvement coordinators, school community liaisons, school office staff, librarians, teachers, and principals, um, as the stakeholders who most often interact with new families that may come in or needy families. Those folks um, are aware of the program to help support our, our students of need. Um, we did survey the students at the end of the school year, and uh, 1,125 students did say that the Chromebook was helpful to their studies this school year, and another 888 said that without this device, they could not complete homework or projects. Um, the devices themselves were funded under emergency connectivity funds last year, so this simply provides, or I'm sorry, continues mobile connectivity for those 2,000 devices. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Trustee Carrillo. Are these devices enough? Yes, good question. Um, so we did not exhaust the devices this year. Um, now we did at the end of this school year, we deactivated all the hotspots that were being used during COVID. And so I do expect an uptick of need. Um, but at this point, I do believe we have enough devices to support our families this year. And can you talk a little bit about how we're collaborating with some of our other um, staff, like the parent involvement coordinator, and I think you mentioned our liaisons to ensure that all of our students who are in need of a device know at least who to ask or how to potentially apply and obtain one? Right. Um, so this program is actually five years old. Um, we started with 500 devices pre-COVID and actually worked really closely with Nora and her folks um, that were at school sites, working directly with families, both obviously in English and the other languages that were of need. Um, our teachers are also one of our main points. They know exactly what kids are of need. And so because they're aware of the program, they will generally send them down to the library. There's a QR code or a survey that essentially just says, hey, the parent is aware. They actually do sign documentation that says, yes, I want my uh, student to participate. Um, but it's a great question because those are the families that are the neediest sometimes are not aware. Mm -hmm. And so we've tried to do our best to, you know, all the languages we can to communicate via Parent Square, QR codes, folks who come into the office, but generally to our teachers are a really good resource. So we have a physical printed out application of some sort, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously sometimes these families don't even have access to right even a smartphone in some yeah. situations okay. yeah and and the librarians are have been a great uh, resource for supporting our families sometimes it's simply a verbal consent and then a signature and then that suffices to get them a device right away awesome thank you very much absolutely trustee solis um you answered a question that you believe those were uh, uh, enough uh pieces of equipment um, let's say you've exhausted that, what's your plan? We actually, we, we do have an additional 1,500 devices that are not school to home um, that were purchased during COVID to help fill um, the, the gaps that we had in, in deploying devices. So we could flex those devices to families that need just a, just a, um, a Chromebook for, for use at home. And we certainly could you know, look at expanding it to hotspots again um, as needed. So at this point, I believe the 2,000 will suffice for the need in our, our community, but we're, we're open to expansion if needed. All right, suggestion. If you see this item pass the board, I would take it as consensus that this board supports this program, and you always have the opportunity to come back with another item, and if we supported this one, there's a good chance we're gonna support the next one. Correct? I very much, yes, sir, I, I very much Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. If there are no other questions or comments, we can return this to, to consent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we move on to item number seven, receive information regarding piggyback contract with Robert V. Jensen Incorporated for fuel purchases. Mr. Bott. Uh, <clears throat> Good evening, board members. Uh, board President Singh, uh, Superintendent Davis. 
Uh, so the district purchases diesel and gasoline on an ongoing basis for buses and district vehicles. As previously stated, on June 28th, the board of June 28th, 2022, the board approved the use of public code section 20118, which allows districts to utilize cooperative bids secured by other public agencies for purchase of materials and services. District staff is recommending the use of Clovis Unified School District's piggyback contract number 2934 for delivery and supply of gasoline fuels. This piggyback bid was awarded on May 24th, 2023 to R.B. Jensen and is available through June 30th, 2024. Uh, administration is recommending this item be placed on the June 27th uh, board agenda for action after I answer any questions. Trustee Solis. Hello, sir. I expect you to hit this one out of the ballpark. It's an easy one. I got you. Okay. Um, I'm assuming this is gasoline and diesel? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Creel. So we keep talking about the need to fix something with our pumps, and I apologize because I, I don't fully understand that. Mm -hmm. um, how does the, the repairs that we need to do impact, if at all, this contract? Yeah, so this, the, the repairs that are needed are for our CNG fueling station, which is compressed, nat uh, compressed natural gas. Uh, this is for diesel and gasoline, so we have you know, a tank and uh, a dispensing system. The repairs needed are for the actual compressor that takes the natural gas we get from the city and compresses it to the specifications to be able to be um, delivered to the school buses. Thank you. That's the part I was missing. Yeah, no I appreciate that. I also can't believe this was a year ago. I feel like we just approved this contract. Thank you. No other questions? Then we can return this for consent. Thank you. We move on to item number eight. Staying with you, Mr. Bog. So receive uh, contracts for ongoing maintenance and operations. Yeah. Um, before you, uh, good evening again. Uh, before you is. Um, some contracts for the maintenance and operations departments for the upcoming school year. Uh, CIS provides uh, the school district with district-wide security patrol. Uh, we did go out for an RFP and go out to bid for this on, and it was approved on uh, June 14, 2022. Uh, e the contract is renewable each year, so we, we will bring this back yearly. And this is the first contract renewal for this, uh, for this um, item. Johnson Controls Fire Protection provides annual fire inspections and other life safety device inspections. Um, again, through um, public code section 20118, which allows us to utilize cooperative bids secured by other public agencies. We'll be using RFP number 030421 through SourceWell. This RFP expires in April 22nd, uh, 2025. Filter Pro, we will be purchasing uh, filters for district-wide HVAC preventative maintenance. Westside Water provides water testing maintenance for our, our drinking water systems at Central High School, Houghton Kearney Elementary, Madison Elementary, and Roosevelt Elementary. Cintas provides our microfiber towels that our custodians will use for nightly cleaning. Uh, again, through public code section 20118, we are allowed to use um, cooperative bids secured by other public agencies. We'll be using contract number RBB19002 through Prince William County Public Schools and Omnia Partners Public Sector. Uh, this RFP will expire um, on 10-31-23, but has already been renewed uh, through 10-31-2025. CIS contract will be $181,660 paid out of general fund. Johnson Controls Fire Protection will be $171,182 paid out of general fund. Filter Pro will be $99,878.10 paid out of general, general fund. Westside Water will be $69,614 paid out of general fund. And the Cintas, $91,541,840 will be paid out of COVID funds. Uh, administration is recommending this item be placed on the June 27th uh, board meeting after I answer any questions the board may have. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Creel. This filter pro, can you talk a little bit about what this is? And I know we did some HVAC work, what, a year, two years ago, maybe in the last three years? Mm -hmm. We've done like two cycles of, of, um, yeah. of repair work. Uh, how does this support that, if at all? 
Yeah, so this is just our air filters. Um, we So the current project we just are finishing up here at Central High School is actually changing out our unit ventilators. Um, previously, we had what was called, uh, there was basically a, a, a filter with no frame around it. Now we're going, everything in the district is kind of like that household frame filter is called uh, bleed. So there, this is just a portion of the HVAC system. It's just for the filtration. Okay, and how frequently do we change these filters? Quarterly, um, if not sooner. So we have school sites in the country or school sites that are around construction. Uh, we're still checking those uh, monthly to see if we need to change them sooner. And do we keep a stock of um, these filters or what? So before this one, we usually just ordered when we needed or gone and went and got them. The reason we're bringing it this way is we want to have the, the vendor will actually stock them for us. So we'll have them more readily available to speed up the process. Got it. Thank you. If uh, no other question, or if anyone wants any additional time to review, just kind of indicate. Otherwise, I'm going to move it to consent. Okay. Then we will bring it back as consent in the next meeting. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We move on to item number nine to receive information regarding Shields and Brawley Elementary School bid schedule and award. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Board President Singh and Board of Trustees. Uh, and superintendent, and superintendent Davis, uh, in order to be, uh, begin construction this year for the Shields and Brawley uh, Elementary site, this information item is being presented to you tonight. Uh, please take a look at your bid schedule attachment and find that the district anticipates to start construction no later than July the, the 10th of 2023, which is this year. Uh, the district would need to start construction this calendar year in order to avoid a building code update on our current drawings. Uh, administration is recommending that this item return on the June 27th, 2023 uh, board uh, for, for, for action on this item uh, to uh, present to you the lowest apparent bidders for this project. Trustee Solis. What you're putting out to bid, is that including any new requirements from the city uh, such as gutters, street lights, anything like that, cutouts in the, what's the residential street? There's one residential, well, Fountain there's two. Way. Fountain oh, Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they still requiring or going to require us to do a cutout? Yeah, so this, yes, th this will include all of the off-site improvements that the city is requiring at this time. Thank you. No other comments or questions? Can we move this to consent? Yeah, we'll bring it back as consent. Thank you. Uh, keeping you up there, Mr. Rodriguez, we receive information regarding construction testing inspection services for Shields and Brawley Elementary School project. Thank you again, uh, Board President Singh, uh, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Davis. <clears throat> Uh, for your information tonight, the district has received a proposal uh, for material uh, testing and laboratory services that are required by the California Building Code for the Shields and Brawley Elementary School site uh, from Salem in Engineering. Salem Engineering has previously provided material testing and lab services on multiple district projects and is knowledgeable about our facilities. Administration is recommending that this item be placed on the June 27, 2023 uh, board item uh, for approval. Trustee Mailing. I just have one question. Um, do you know what uh, they charged for the Gar Justin Garza school, their total cost, more or less? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I, I know that the uh, original proposal uh, had to be amended. Okay, I just saw maximum 750000 I was just curious what Garza's ended up to be. I can get that information for you. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if I remember correctly, that Garza contract, they found something and they had to do additional testing, right? Which is why the contract increased for the services. Yeah. You are correct. So it was expensive. It was a lot of money. But this is just for... The labor. This is for the individuals, three individuals. This isn't for the serve. This is just for 
three individual, I think one full time, two part time people. Is that correct? No, it's that's, that's the next, next one. one. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, this is the testing and inspection. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If no objections, we can move this to consent. Oh, sorry. One oh, sorry. Question. Go ahead, Trustee. And just for confirmation, I know the answer to this, but both for this and the next contract, we're required by law to provide, to contract for these services. You are correct. Thanks. And we can move this to the consent agenda for the next uh, for the next board meeting. And moving on to our last uh, item on the action, or sorry, on the information items, uh, number eleven, receive information regarding inspection services for Shields and Brawley Elementary School project. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Board President. Uh, for your information tonight, the district has received a proposal for inspection services that are required by the California Building Code for the Shields and Brawley Elementary School site by Mr. David. Uh, David Dahl. Mr. Dahl uh, has uh, previously provided inspection services on multiple district projects and is knowledgeable of our, our facilities. Uh, administration is recommending this item be placed on the June uh, 27, 2023 board uh, agenda for approval. Question, Trustee Miller? No. That's why we looked at you, because we thought it might mean <laughs> related to this. I do have a question about this one. Sure. If we have the unfortunate event of having to extend the construction schedule, where is this item going to come back um, to increase the allowed amount of money, or do we anticipate that even the 750000 will be sufficient? I believe it's a, if we do not encounter any unforeseen circumstances, then no. But I, I'm anticipating it. We may come back at some point. Okay. That means you're you expecting a delay already? No, but sometimes there's either unforeseen circumstances that we don't know. We try to do our, our due diligence and, you know, our best to to examine the site and to study the site, but sometimes when we uh, start digging, we find things that, you know, that, that may uh, hold, hold up the trades. I mean, it's, how should I say, it's not, we're not, we just need to plan for it. So in, in the event that that does happen, no. Do I expect any delays? No, I, I think we're, with regard to uh, our due diligence, I, I think uh, we've kind of taken the majority of the things. We, we've tightened up uh, the drawings uh, quite a bit, extensively, uh, and um, I'm, I'm pretty confident. But to say that uh, these items won't return uh, would be misleading. So I, I understand. Thanks. Mm -hmm. May I just request that if this item, if we are required to extend this item, that we get an update on the status and how much more time we anticipate and, and how much we've ex expended on the 750000 Absolutely. Thank you. If no objections, we can return this to consent agenda as well. Thanks, we move on to advanced planning. Great, so no, no current changes. Any additional information or closing comments by anyone? Trustee Solis? Just wanted, to, just wanted to say last week I had the opportunity, they did, had a um, tour of uh, Garza in the pool area and all the contractors were out there. I, uh, I don't know whose idea that was, but dittos to you, give yourself a pat on the back. It was a good event. I heard a lot of useful information from the contractors talking about it. There were uh, representatives from other school districts looking at the construction of it, and I really think it just highlighted our school district in a good light. Thank you. Our next meeting, uh, our next regular board meeting will be held in two weeks on Tuesday, June 27th, 2023 at 6 p.m. for closed session and of course 7 p.m. for public session here at the Central East High School Performing Arts Center. And uh, we will uh, adjourn back to closed session.
Thank you. Thank you.